I'm Dr. Kristen R. Bromley. This video series, which is part of my online music academy, specifically accompanies Note Reading Book 3 from my Method Book series. Like all my books, this selection is available to purchase through Amazon and Google Play. For help, see the links in the description below. In the videos which are part of this specific course, I progress through the lessons in Note Reading Book 3, explaining and demonstrating concepts and playing each of the songs and exercises contained therein, so you can hear how they sound and play them right along with me. You are of course welcome to view these videos with or without the book, but with the book you can work through all the songs and exercises, and in the process come to know the entire fretboard and master the skill of playing written notes all along the neck. Alright, let's get to jamming in this lesson. Dr. Kristen Bromley, welcome back. We are in lesson 24 that goes with note reading book 3. In this lesson we're working on a lot of chromatic movement, a lot of chromatic passages. So it's going to be great, we haven't done this yet. Let's go ahead and dive in. So on page 199 there at the bottom half of the page, there is an example of how to play a chromatic scale starting on C. Now, before I even look at that specifically or explain it, just want to talk through the chromatic scale. So, we have an octave, and if I use the open E string on the bottom, I grab it at the octave, or that 12th fret where we have that E. The chromatic scale includes all the notes that we have between those two pitches, so that same note in the two different octaves. And the guitar is designed around the chromatic scale. Every time we move up a fret, we're going up the chromatic scale. So as I play up this, it's just one fret at a time, I'm up to that E and I can go back down. Now, it's not going to be very efficient most of the time to just play all the notes on one string. We like to play in positions, but I'll show you another trick as we move from one string to the next. So if I start, for example, on C at the 8th fret of the 6th string, if I play chromatically four pitches in a row, so I'm just going 1, 2, 3, 4, or 8, 9, 10, 11 on, that, on the frets, but if I do that, and then when I get to the 5th string, I shift down by one fret, so I'm going 7, 8, 9, 10, and then I get to the 4th string and I shift down again, so I'm going 6, 7, 8, 9, when I get to the 3rd string I'm shifting down again, going 5, 6, 7, 8, now I don't shift when I get to the B string, or the 2nd string, because there's a tuning difference between the 3rd string and the 2nd string, so I just go uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 again, and then I shift down to the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, on that high string and then I actually have my C if I want to go back up to my C at the 8th fret. So, without talking I've got coming down I did that in reverse. Now this is a fun way to play but a lot of times when we're reading music it's not very practical maybe there's a lot of skips and it's more valuable to stay sort of in a position and catch the chromatic notes in that position. So how do we stay in a general position? Well with the chromatic scale we are gonna have the span of five frets so it's like when we're playing a major scale and we're in, say, like I'm playing C major down here in second position, and then I gotta go up to third position. So we're gonna find ourselves shifting out of the four note uh, position some um, into sort of a five note ish range, and that's what you can see with the diagram there on page 199. Basically, in the principle, all we have to do is except I mean on this first string as we get started it's we can just play one two three four but then we get to the next string and we go down by a fret this time we need to add so that we play five frets on that string then we jump down one play five frets again jump down one 
And then here we have different options. If I just play four notes, then I can go straight up to the next position, but I need to play five, shift down, and I could play four or five and come back down. I just went down to the B and back to the C. So you need the five notes on each string, so to speak, once you've started off your root. So I use C as the root note. So I've got four there with that C. But starting on the next string, I need five, five, and five. And then between the B string and the G string, one of them's only going to have four notes and the other one's going to have five. But essentially, I can go one, two, three, four, and then I shift down this time I use five frets which means I'm going to be coming up one fret and I got to shift down again somewhere along there I shift up so I'm going to come down again if I choose to not shift on that string then I go straight up to the next one but I got to shift and have five frets there shift down and have I could have five frets on that high one too if I choose to put five frets on the third string then I'm only going to have four on the B string but generally speaking, that covers all the notes that we would need in a given position. And that's what is shown there at the bottom of page 199. There's a way to go through. You can see with that diagram that the third string is the one where we only used four notes, which is how I just played it. But you could do five notes on that one and only do four notes on the B string. Okay, let's try putting this into actually reading and uh, playing music. So if you flip on over to page 200... We've got the chromatic scale, generally speaking, in position two and three. So if I put my index finger on the C note, because that's we're going to work with this lesson in the key of C. Occasionally in previous lessons, we've run into melodies where there's chromatic pitches, and we can read chromatic notes in all the different keys that we've worked on. But here as we're working on chromatic notes, we're just going to work kind of out of the key of C or without any sharps or flats in the key signature. Having sharps and flats in the key signature can add a challenge. It's not so bad when there's only the occasional chromatic note. If music is really chromatic, then usually they forego the key signature altogether and you just read the accidentals against no sharps or flats in the key signature. And then to truly know what key we're in, you kind of have to deduce that from the melody and the chords that go with it. We're just going to work though here in this lesson in the key of C. So with the chromatic scale in that third slash second position, I stick my index finger on the C at the third fret and I could play one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to go up and I have to have five notes on that string and I'm going to get again go to the second position, do five notes or four, doesn't matter really. And then I've got my, since I just did five, I'm going to do four notes on that uh, second string and then I'm going to go to second, third, however you want to play and you kind of have the range that you run into there. And then when you get down to the C, you can again add that B, which would be the fifth note, come down, you could do five notes on that low string, and there we are. Reading this way is a little bit of a challenge with all these sharps and flats. It can help knowing where the C note, the notes from the C major scale are, and then just associate them. What's nice at this point in the book is that we've read in all these other keys, so we're at least familiar with these notes as we try to find them. I also want to say, as you're reading through these songs and exercises, if you go out of the position, in this case, position two slash three, and you end up in first position for a moment or fourth position, it's okay. Chromatic music kind of takes us that way, so there's no need to worry. We're just sort of working in that general position. Okay, so let's take a look then at this exercise, number one, on page 200. Now, as you're reading through it, if we go outside of position two or three, it's not that big of a deal. It happens all the time with chromatic music. If, if we end up in first position or up in third position, it just kind of, we kind of gradually work that way. That's totally fine. Another thing to remember as you're working through these is that a chromatic carries through the entire measure. So you may have a spot as you're reading through. Remember that that chromatic continues to carry through unless there's a natural sign that'll change it back. So you got to watch for that sort of thing. 
and we'll just go ahead and go for it. I'll try and take it nice and slow. When reading the chromatic scale exactly, uh, you may kind of just get lost with where the natural notes are, but as we get into these songs and exercises, keeping track of sort of the C major scale position can be really helpful, and then just sort of shifting and reaching to find the notes that are outside of it when we run into those can be really helpful. I'm going to start us off really slow with these quarter notes uh, in preparation for getting into the eighth notes. So we're going to go one and two and ready and go and...
over and do some melodies. So on page 201, starting with the old gray mare, I'm going to give us a three beat count in. So we got one, two, three. Okay, and we'll do Take Me Out to the Ball Game. We'll give us a three beat count in. One, two, three. Scarborough Fair. I'll give us a three-beat count in. One, two, three. Okay, we'll flip on over to page 201 and we'll look at the next position. So, position 5 4. This is coming, these positions are coming sort of with that major scale in mind. So, we've got that C major scale right there in 5th slash 4th position. But again, as we're working on it and we're working with the chromatic movement, we may end up outside of that sum, and that's okay. Let's just go ahead and try number five here. So you're going to have one and two and ready and go and... Thank you. 
Okay. Let's do these melodies over on page 203, starting with the Star Spangled Banner. I'll give us three, one, two, and we'll be in. Three, one, two. <laughs> sort of did a, just a short pause on that fermata. You could pause there as long as you want. Okay, Lion of Judah, August 3, 1, 2, and we'll be in on that one. 3, 1, 2... <laughs> Okay, let's flip on over to page 204, and we'll do sailing, sailing. I'll give us one and uh, two and, uh, and we'll be in one and uh, two and. Uh. Okay, and we'll look at the next position. So position seven and eight, so our index finger on that C at the eighth fret. We're gonna work in that position a little bit where we would normally play our C major scale with our middle finger on that C at that eighth fret. So we're gonna go with number nine. One and two and ready and go and...
Okay, and let's do number 10. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. One and two and ready and go and... Okay, and we'll do number 11, Teasdale. I'll give us three beat count and we'll catch beat four in that pickup measure. One, two, three. Okay, and we'll look at the next position. So positions 10 and 9. Let's flip on over to page 206. So we're looking at being in the area where we'd normally play our C major scale with our middle finger on that C at the 10th fret on the 4th string. So you can run that if you need to. In a lot of ways, I find it helpful to run the major scale more than the chromatic scale and then just find the chromatic pitches around it. But let's go ahead and do number 12. So we're going to have one and two and ready and go and... Thank you. 
right, let's go over and do number 13, CC Ratter. So you got one, two, ready, and... Okay, then we'll do the next position. So position 12 and 13. With our pinky on the C note at, at on the fifth string at the 15th fret, that's where we normally have our C scale. And as we play this one, we may shift up to position 13. You, you may even find yourself sometimes going down to position 11. So just go with it. That's what we always say. We'll start off with Gabriel here, number 14. So it's going to be 3, 1, 2 in the count off, and we'll be in 3, 1, 2. Okay, and we'll flip on over to page 208 and do number 15. So we did the melody first, now we're going to do the chromatic exercise. So we'll go one and two and ready and go and...
Okay. And that wraps us up for this lesson. So there's music out there. We got to read a lot of chromatic notes. That one had a lot of chromatic notes. I hope you're having fun with the guitar. Take care. We'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For help with other guitar playing skills, check out more of my method books and the numerous lessons available as part of my online academy here on YouTube. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.